morning okay so uh, i guess the complexity part is clear to you guys how we can calculate it so no more things i want to say about the searching yes you guys already know about searching there are basically two types of searching one is binary search and other is the linear search so what happens in linear searching mainly we use searching only to search or find one or more than one items in your data set or list or niche so there are basically two algorithms linear and binary you guys already learned about linear and binary in last semester so i won't go through the process in deep so mainly i am concerned about the complexity part okay so your time complexity already mentioned it depends on the size of your list the best case scenario occurs when your element is at the beginning of the list we have to understand when the best case scenario will arise and when your worst case scenario will arise uh, in like theoretical term you guys already know worst case means the maximum time a uh, program or algorithm is going to take to finish the job and the best case is the minimum amount of time it is going to take okay so worst case will occur when you are searching for an item and that item is at the end of your list okay in that case you have to search through the whole array then only you will find it fair right? and the best case scenario will occur when the item you are looking for is at the beginning of the list so just in one step one step you will get the item you are looking for so time complexity for linear search is o n okay and best case and all will take simply o n so if we look at the program so this is the program for linear search so here you are taking arrays variables and anything so which part mostly mostly contribute to your running time so each each execution time each line will take one one unit of time Correct. So this printf scanf just will take one unit of time, one unit of time. Now here we have for loop. So what will be the complexity for this part? This part will be. What will be the complexity for this part? This for loop. And right. Inside one constant term, then. Whatever is the loop, then we have again print up scan up again. We take one one unit of time. Right. Next, we have one for loop, then there is again if and else statements. Okay, so what will be the complexity? So, whatever is the complexity, you are just adding up. Suppose here one unit of time, here one unit of time, one plus one, two, then again scan up one unit of time, two plus one, three. Then again, print f one unit of time three plus one four and so on. You are just adding up the complexity for every line. And here it will be here all are constants. So constant term plus here is another constant term plus n time, correct? Right? And so on. So here inside for loop we have another if else state. Okay. So what will be the complexity for this part? Any guesses for this part? This for inside for again have we have say O n square. Why is it O n square? There is a for loop. Inside for loop, we have if else statement. 
just think and tell me what will be the complexity of this piece of thing. This line will take how much time and what how much time it will take the if statement. Computer running running time for this if part inside the whole. Anyone? 17, rule number 17, rule number 1. It will again take just O and time. Inside for you doesn't matter what's the statement. Here, this if statement will also run for n number of times because it is inside the for loop. So this piece of code will again take simply O n. And here this if statement will take simply one unit of time. Why? It's simply checking whether C is equal to N or not. It's a single line. Right? So it will take a constant term and return will take again a constant type. So if you add up all these complexities like uh, constant and all, what will be the total complexity? It will be O N. 1n for this for loop and 1n for this for loop. So whatever is the constant inside doesn't matter. So total running time in worst case is the O n. Are you getting the point? Anyway, just simply see the logic of your linear search. What you will do? You try to find the item one by one, correct? Right? Until all, all elements are finished. Suppose there are five elements in your linear search. So how many comparisons will be there? If there are five items, Many comparisons will be there? Four. Okay. So, suppose you are trying to find something here. Okay. So, here, if you are looking for item number 5, you are looking for 5, your target is 5, you have to compare all the elements one by one. Correct? 
So first you will compare 5 with the 11 first one. Whether it is equal to 5 or 5 is not 0 is not equal to 5. Correct. So it will move to other one. Now you will again check whether 5 is equal to 1 or not. Now 5 is not equal to 1. Then you will move to the next element which is 2. Again you will compare whether 2 is equal to 5 or not. It is not. Then again you will move to the next and so on. Then in the last position you are getting the item which is 5. That means you have been through the whole list to find the number just because your item is at the end of the list. So this is the worst case. And since you have to went through the whole thing, so it will take O and time. Right? Now for example, your target is 0. What? Uh, 0. Now first you are you will first from the first pointer. Now 0 equal to 0. That means just in one step you are getting the item you are looking for. So what will be the best case here? What will be the best case? What will be the best case? In just single one step you just got the number you are looking for. What will be the best case? Huh? Yes, correct. It's O one time. Single steps. So for linear search, your base case is just O one. Why? Just just in one step you are getting the item. And worst case is O n n is nothing but the input size and the item you are looking for at the end. So you have to look through the whole element. So time complexity for linear search. Worst case is O n and best case is O 1. See, I mentioned earlier for best case we have different asymptotic notations. But most of the time people just use B O only. So linear part is clear. You got the logic how it's O1 times and ON times for the linear search. Yes. Okay. Now come to the binary search. Okay. See time complexity was it. So now come to the binary part. Okay. So what is a binary search? You guys already know. It's a divide and conquer approach. Right? So we always sort the array first. Then we proceed with the searching. So here first step is that we repeatedly divide the sorted array into two halves. The first condition for binary search is always there. The array should be already sorted. Then we repeatedly divide the sorted array into two halves and in each half we begin the same process. Okay. So we go to the mid value first. Right. So if the item we are looking for is at the middle of the interval then we check whether the value we are looking for is greater than the mid value or less than the mid value. If it is less than the mid value, we will take the values all less than the midpoint and otherwise we will take the other half. Okay, for example here. So we consider this is a low, this is a high value and we are looking for number 4. So which one is the mid value here? Six. six is the mid value. So then what we do, we think whether 4 is less than or greater than 6. 
4 is less than the mid value which is 6. So we will consider only this part and we are going to discard this part. We won't look to this part at all. Then same process we will again start with this part. Okay, so moment you find the mid value, we said the next value is the high and low will remain same. Okay, then we took that part. Now we will again do the same thing. Now mid value is 4. And the item we are looking for is 4. So we found the target value and your algorithm or program will stop there. So this is the program for binary search. We use the same program I guess in last semester also. So now see which one is the main part here. Okay. So see, apart from the program, how you can find the okay. see the logic here. It's a whole array, and we are mainly concerned about mid value. So here mid value. And you can think the number which is just less than 1 or just previous 6 is the mid minus 1. And before that one is the mid plus 1. Okay. So if your item, if at this part, we are going to only consider this part. In this case, the 7 will remain the first. Okay. If we take this part. Okay. This part. So 7 will remain first, then last will remain last, and mid value will be the SI. And if we take the left hand side, then first will remain same. Okay, just that last will remain be the mid minus 1. So if you see the program here, uh, first is just enter the number and all. So here we are setting the first equal to 0 and last equal to minus 1. These are the index. Index for the first is 0 and the last is n minus 1. Okay. Then we also find the middle value. Middle is equal to first plus last divided by 2. How we find it? First plus like last divided by 2. Now we will check by first is less than equal to last. We will keep checking whether the middle value is less than search item or not. Okay. If so, if we find any item which is less than the searching item, then we will set first equal to middle plus one. Right. That means we are taking this part. The searching item is greater than the middle value. So we will take this part. So in this case, first will be assigned. Middle plus one. See the first and mid. We are taking this part. Okay. In the case where search value is greater than the mid value. Okay. Then else means else means if it is less, then we set last equal to mid minus one. Okay. That means if you are taking this part, this mid minus one is equal to your last value here. First will remain same. So if you take the left hand side, the first will remain first. No problem. Just that last value will become mid minus 1. And if you are taking the right hand side, the last will remain same. And the first value will become the mid plus 1. And so on. Okay, so what will be the complexity? In this program, we have a while function and we have if function. While is, you can just relate with the for loop as well. So, see, the time complexity for binary search is, best case is O1. When will it be O1? Can you tell me? For binary case, for binary search, remember, we find a mid value. That means if the middle value is the item you are looking for, 
then only base case will arise not the first item like the linear case because in binary search we divide the item into two halves so we first look for the mid value so if your item is the in the mid position itself then your base case scenario will come and just in one single step you are getting it so best case will be one for worst and average both is like log n and space complexity is o1 when it's depending on your number of units so if there are five space is taking five units and all. so it's n so now how you will find the complexity so i'm just showing you the simple way so suppose here input size is seven and target value is four so in first pass what you are doing this is the total input size and you are dividing the whole array so 7 divided by 2, correct? You are just dividing. Two half means what? You are just doing 7 divided by 2 and you are getting 3 items here. Okay. Next time you are doing again same thing. You are doing 3 divided by 2 and getting 1. Correct? So you can represent this whole thing in terms of this one n into half power k okay here there is only just two steps for example you have 100 numbers 100 inputs are there that means every time you are going to divide your input size by 2 and you don't know how many times you are going to divide it might go 1 2 3 up to n times just for conversion I'm just taking the name k. Okay, you are dividing the whole array into half k numbers of time 1, 2, 3 up to k numbers of time. And main goal is what? Pin to find simple one element. Okay, so if you simplify this equation, it will look like this n 2 power k 1. Okay, now what it does? You just divide the both sides into 2 power k. So from this part, you will get this 2k into n power 2 by k and 1 into 2 power k. Okay, after that, you can cancel and you will get this n equal to 2 power k. Okay, then you take log in both sides and finally you will get the answer log n equal to k. So this is how you find the logarithmic tan complexity for binary search. Means three cases, like we always divide the whole input size into two halves. We keep it's a divide and contour. Repeatedly we keep dividing the item. So n divided by two. Since it can run up to maybe k times so you are dividing the item for k numbers of time okay then finally we just take log with the log what the idea So which one is better, linear or binary? For linear search, yeah, see. So for linear search, there is no preconditions. For binary search, there is a precondition that all the items should be sorted or arranged. Okay, then you just keep repeatedly dividing. So time complexity for linear search is simply O n because you are considering the whole input size. And for binary search, it's log n because you are dividing the whole input size into two halves 
repeatedly. Okay, a best case vote is O1. Just in single step, you are getting the item you are looking for. Just that in case of linear search, the item will be at the first position. But in case of binary search, the item you are looking for will be at the middle position. Is it clear? So if your input size or your data size is very large, then you can imagine if you have to use the linear search, how much amount it is going to take. If you have like thousands of data and you are finding one item, so you have to go through the thousand data. Is it possible? It is time consuming, right? So if your data set is very large, mm -hmm. Always go for the binary search because if the data size like thousand or lakhs or what, it will divide the whole data set into full halves. So you will keep repeatedly divide the uh, input into full halves. Therefore, binary search is always efficient than the linear search. Got it? But for both searching, you can just use your logic to find the time complex. It's very easy. Searching, sorting. All these cases, you just apply the logic. You will get the time complexity. No need to go through the program also. Okay, is it clear? Everyone, any doubts? If you have doubt, you can text me as it. Yes, no, is it clear? Both searching the time complexity part. Okay, I guess Saturday, Saturday we have like mentoring part, right? So maybe next week on, I'll keep a session for the Saturday. It's like you have to present something. I know many of you are having like a big communication problems. You are not confident enough or something like that. So you need to break those barriers and you have to start it from now on. So Saturday, sometimes we will give you topic. It can be any topic. It's up to you. Okay. Topic is up to you. Whatever topic you have to select. Just that you have to give a give presentation of five minutes. It's up to you how you want to explain you want to simply verbally explain it, if you want to use presentation slides, PPT slides, videos, anything, it's up to you. Means you have to find out how you want to explain a particular topic you have chosen. Okay, so in this way, you are going to break those, all those problems, some, like you don't want to speak in your class, you have communication problems, you are a bit shy, I'm not sure. So you have to come over these problems. So I'll start that thing. And everyone has to measure. Okay, not this Saturday. And from next week. Onwards. Okay, clear to everyone. I'll stop sharing you by using glass also. I hope your star is not falling to our class.
Ma'am, our AC classes are can we leave? Yes. Wait, I just take attendance. Okay, done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.